uh, I'm going to talk about a very important issue, which is the uh, calcific uremic artery normalcy, or sometimes we say calcium relaxes. It is a very important issue. Why? This disease is very serious, as you see. The patient affected, you see this skin necrosis and the gangrene. Uh, usually, it is not only painful, but also can lead to <coughs> high incidence of mortality. <coughs> now, if we come to cancer paralysis, it is uh, poorly understood and highly morbid syndrome of vascular calcification and skin necrosis. It was first reported a long time ago, in 1899-98, by White uh, and his colleague. But more recently, in 1962, it, uh, this uh, professor had uh, uh, created a, an experimental model for cancer relaxes in red, nephrectomized red. This is very important so that we can understand the pathophysiology and we can use new drugs to treat it. <laughs> so if we can to come again to the definition, calcific uremic artery neuropathy or calcific relaxes is a devastating, life-threatening ischemic vasculopathy confined primarily to patient with CKD. This uh, ischemia, the ischemia may be so severe that frank infarction of downstream tissue develops. Infarction, as I said to you. The most common and most noticeable damage is in the skin and subcutaneous tissue. But as you know, it can affect deeper uh, as muscles, viscera can, can be affected also. Can semi-curimic arterial apathy should be distinguished from benign nodular calcification, we call it uh, calcinosis cutis, which can develop in patients with very high serum calcium and phosphorus. Probably this is the calcinosis cutis. It looks very benign if we compare it to uh, calciphylaxis. If we come to the epidemiology and risk factor of calciphylaxis, the incidence of calciphylaxis may be increasing. We know why later on. The estimated incidence range between 1 to 4 per 100 patients per year. This might be due to, uh, in part, to increase the physician awareness and possibly the practice of treating severe hyperparathyroidism with cancer based phosphate binding and vitamin D analog. Uh, I think in the recent era, as doctors, we are abusing. Uh, the cancer, the vitamin D analogs. If we come to the risk factors, there are a lot of risk factors of these in the uh, long term obesity, recent uh, and sudden weight loss, malnutrition, infusions of medications such as iron extract, removed, and recent use uh, uh, of immunosuppressive agents. Corticosteroid, you know, many of our patients were nephrotic and given immunosuppressive drugs, liver disease, diabetes mellitus, and insulin injection, process of injection itself can be a precipitating factor. Use of vitamin D and cancer based phosphate binder uh, uh, causing hypercalcemia, in these things. Elevated aluminium level, this is a contamination of dioxin water or aluminium containing phosphate binder called uh, health in this uh, catastrophe uh, and, con con uh, and concomitant uh, vascular disease and of course use of warfarin. Now if we come to the clinical manifestation of calcium phylaxis, uh, it is frequently precipitated by a specific events such as local skin trauma or hypertensive episode. Uh, it is typically characterized by area of ischemic necrosis of the dead, subcutaneous fat, and less often muscle can also be affected in severe cases. These skin changes lead to reveal reticularis of violations, painful, blade like subcutaneous nodule on the drum, bubble, rocks 
muscle extremities uh, that is in the area of greatest adiposity. <coughs> this type of calciphylaxis on the trunk, usually we call it proximal calciphylaxis. Here, for example, you see this. B is patient. This is the skin necrosis. This could be fatal. Most patients with calciphylaxis have a long standing history of chronic renal failure and renal replacement therapy. On a rare occasion, calciphylaxis may occur in a patient with chronic renal failure prior to initiation of replacement therapy. Very rarely, it may occur in an individual without history of chronic renal failure. Some other diseases uh, can uh, lead to calciphylaxis. We know what are these diseases later on. Frequently, patients have been non-compliant with dietary. It takes a lot of milk and fish and these things. Diet contains phosphorus. Medical is not receiving a specific binder. And diet's prescription is poor, poorly analyzed prior to the onset of cancer analysis. Many persons who develop cancer analysis have undergone renal allograft transplantation and the graft may still be functioning when cancer can actually develop, but of course he had renal impairment, of course he had problems with his parathyroid gland and his cancer and phosphorus. Patient with a non-uremic cancer phylaxis, so he is not a uremic patient, frequently have a history of primary hyperphora, we know our patients are secondary hyperphora, patient with some type types of uh, malignancies, alcohol and chronic liver disease, or underlying connective tissue disease, or pro-inflammatory condition. All these conditions can lead to cancer relaxes in absence of renal failure. Cancer relaxes can also affect hand, not only trunk, but also hand, finger, lower extremities, so it may mimic atherosclerotic peripheral vascular disease, and we call it here distant calcium phylaxis. Lesions of calcium phylaxis typically develop suddenly and progress rapidly, so it kills them. Lesions may be uh, singular or numerous, and they generally occur on the lower extremities. However, lesions also may develop on the hand with intense pain and is a constant harm. You see this? Gangrenous skin. Okay. And sometimes bullion are there. You see this is calcium paraxis lesion along the distribution of the blood vessel. This lesion, this very severe gangrenous lesion. It is important that if you look to peripheral pulse, it will be normal. This is differentiated from atherosclerotic uh, lesions. This is cancer paralysis. Now, if you come to pathology, the histologic features of cancer paralysis are suggestive but not pathognomonic, since it can be present with no, uh, we can find calcification in the skin and blood vessel without this syndrome. A specimen from incisional biopsies of area lesion shows sudden histological change with calcification in the dermis and vessels. Late lesion characteristically show epidermal ulceration, dermal necrosis, and neural calcification with intimate hyperplasia of small vessel and medium-sized blood vessel in the dermis and subcutaneous tissue. See this? Small vessel is the medial calcification and hyperplasia in the intima. You see here calcification in blood vessel and also in the dermis. There is widespread calcification. You see this arterial with extensive uh, calcification. Okay. Another vessel is calcification. Now we come to diagnosis. Although ulceration is an obvious presentation of calcium 
Increasing awareness of the condition should allow diagnosis at an earlier, non ulcer stage, since when ulceration occurs, infection comes with sepsis and mortality. Biopsies are discouraged since it can precipitate more necrosis because of potential ulceration in the region of incision and the risk of uh, uh, neuron you can take area without calcification. Many conditions based diagnosis can spread on physical examination of the final one. Other potentially useful diagnostic procedure include measurement of transcutaneous oxygen saturation. It will be decreased. Uh, bone scintigraphy and zero radiography. Begin radiography uniformly demonstrate an authorization of vascular calcification within the nerves and subcutaneous tissue. Although calcification is common in persons in the stage of renal disease and non specific for calcification, a recent study showed patients with calcification had 